All right, welcome back to another requested video. Alvin Talen wants to know how to expose C-Log3 perfectly. And since you asked, I deliver. Let's go. All right, yesterday I posted a video about the best settings for Canon EOS R7 for both photo and video, and Alvin Telling came into the comments stating a problem. Alvin says, I'm still having problems with the C-Log3 about the correct exposure. One time I went to Latvia and all my videos are blown out. That sucks. I'm sorry to hear that, bro, but hope I can bring some light to that issue with this video. When you're using log profiles, there are a lot of ways you can screw up the exposure, like completely when you're shooting. And trust me, I have been there because when I started shooting with C-Log3, I didn't know anything about the correct exposure. I was just eyeballing it and yeah, that did not go too well. But when I started looking into the best settings and learning how to use my camera, I have found the best way to nail it every single time. And just so you know, I'm not a professional, so a little disclaimer there. This is just my way. This is just how I do it. And for this video to make any sense, I shot a couple of clips outside, which I'm gonna show in this video so that you will get a good idea about how this thing works. So let's jump into the computer and I will explain you through it. All right, so here we have a couple of clips that I just shot outside. Now the lighting conditions are pretty harsh and nailing the exposure was was pretty tricky because there's a lot of highlights blown out. You can see some clipping there because I was shooting straight into the light. So no wonder there's gotta be some clipping here because sun usually overexposes. <laughs> but otherwise it looks pretty decent when it, when it comes to the scopes. We got a lot of information here on the midtones. We got a lot of information here in the shadows. We got a lot of space to work with. So other than the blown out sun here, everything else seems to be pretty nicely exposed. And then we go to the second clip, which is right here. This is a perfectly exposed image. Now, this is not my best work when it comes to video, but when you look at the scopes, this is a perfectly exposed image. We have a lot of room in the shadows. We got some room there in the highlights. So we got a lot of room to play with. Okay, so how did I do this? How did I nail the exposure for this shot? For both of these shots, I used only the histogram. Now, as you can see here, when I was looking for the right exposure, you can see that the histogram is all the way packed into the left side. Now, this would mean that the image would be too dark and we would not be able to preserve as many details in the shadows. And then we go all the way into the other end of the scale, this would be overexposed. You can see right here that the histogram is starting to peek into the right side and that means that the highlights will be blown out. But when we go down, a little bit here I'm using the variable ND filter we can see that the histogram levels off much nicely and it goes straight into the middle and nothing is clipping out here on the right side and nothing is clipping out here on the left side and now one thing pay attention to the lighting meter that you can see here the lighting meter on the bottom of the screen shows that there should be a lot of things overexposed and blown out in this image but when we go here and we check the final footage from this scene nothing is blown out. So do yourself a favor, when you're shooting with C-Log3, do not trust the lighting meter on the bottom of the screen. That That's not gonna help you in any way. It's always gonna show that you're overexposing your footage with at least two stops or 1.7 stops. So don't trust it, trust the histogram instead. Because like you can see here, the histogram is perfectly balanced, everything is perfectly exposed, and the lighting meter still shows overexposing with maybe plus 1.7 stops. Don't trust your eyes, don't trust the lighting meter, trust the histogram. Now the next thing I would do is to do the color space transform. I'm not gonna spend any more time to color grade this footage because this is just for example. I'm gonna change the input color space into Canon Cinema Gamu, which I used, and then we're gonna put the gamma, which is Canon C-Log3. And now as you can still see, nothing is blown out here on the scopes, nothing. Everything is perfect and to me, this is a perfectly exposed image. We still got plenty of room to work with here in the shadows, here in the midtones, and everything looks good. If I want to do some quick edits here, I'm gonna create another node, and then we're just gonna drop the shadows down. Now they're starting to clip there. 
and we can even drop down the highlights. And as you can see, there's plenty of stuff there, plenty of data there in the highlights to play around with. I'm just gonna leave it there as it is. Then I'm gonna drop down a little bit of the midtones. And as you can see, that is a perfectly exposed image. Nothing is clipping in the shadows and nothing is clipping in the highlights. And I did that using the histogram on the Canon EOS R7. I did not eyeball it, I did not guess it, I did not use the lighting meter, but I trusted the histogram on the screen. All right, I'm just gonna set this one up right here. Would you actually believe it that I just turned off the microphone while I was recording this? This is a stupid mistake there. Don't turn off the microphone when you're making a video. Okay, but back to the topic. There's this one thing, this one annoying thing with the Canon EOS R7. I don't know if this is an issue with other Canon cameras, but with the R7, when you start to shoot the video, the histogram goes away from the screen. Now, I know that's stupid, but do yourself a favor, when you start to shoot, check the perfect exposure of your image from that histogram before hitting record. Because it's gonna go away when you hit the record and that is dumb, I know, but that is just something that we have to deal with. And using the histogram is crucial if you want to nail the exposure using C-Log3. All right, there you have it. Hope this answers your question, Alvin, and I hope this answers the question of everybody else out there. And remember, this is just one way of doing this. This is my way of doing this, and I have been happy with the results. And I hope that this will help you guys out when you're out there shooting videos. Now, if you found this video helpful, if you liked it, hit the like button, subscribe if you have not done so already, and as always, I will be seeing you guys in the next one. Peace.